Hello movie lovers. Good to see us. And how's everybody this week? Still been watching all those movies? I've watched a few this week. Yeah, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Alright, let's see. What did I watch this week? Alright, let's get it together here. Show a few things. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, on the movie channel, I watched a movie. Believe it or not, I watched a movie called Almost Christmas. Yeah, I recorded it back in probably December or something. I forgot to watch it. Anyway, I thought, oh, what the heck. I'll watch it. Almost Christmas, starring Danny Glover. You know Danny Glover. And Omar Epps. And Monique. Love Monique. She's hilarious. Anyway, it's a bunch of uh, black family get together in your mom and dad's house. All the kids gather for Christmas. And it's the first Christmas they've had together since their mom passed away. So it's one of those stories. A couple of sisters fight with each other. You know, one, one of them are, is a football player and he comes back. And Anyway, it's a very good story. I, I liked it. I thought it was well done, very enjoyable. It was fun. It was sad here and there, but it was more of a fun movie than sad. I think the fun, the laughter outweighed the sadness of it. Yeah, and he's looking all through the kitchen for his wife's uh, recipe uh, tin can. You know where all the recipes are? Yeah, because he's trying to make a, a pie and he's failing. He's not doing very well. So, anyway, he's making a pie and he gets it all done. He make, you know, eats it and he makes a face, throws it all out. Anyway, so everybody shows up for Christmas. Christmas week, five days or whatever, and they spend a week in the house. So I give it a seven. It's a very, a very well done movie. I liked it. So that's all right. And I watched, uh, I watched the next one. I watched it on TCM. Yeah, I, I recorded this one too from TCM. I, I have the movie, but uh, I recorded it uh, and watched it on TCM again. Like I said, I have it over there in those black boxes in the shelf over there. But uh, this one's from 1953, and it's called The Titanic. And it stars Clifton Webb and Barbara Stanwyck. And a young Robert Wagner, probably 21 years old. I think at this time Barbara Stanwyck was 45. I think Robert Wagner and Barbara Stanton had a little love fiasco going for three or four years back then when they met on The Titanic. Anyway, that's... Uh, neither here nor there, but uh, story-wise, how do you put a story together in order to, you know, spend an hour and a half watching people in order to find out the end of the movie, as most of us know, Titanic 1912, right down to the bottom of the ocean, ice, big iceberg sliced it along the side and the water came in and, yeah, so we got Barbara Stanwyck and Clifton Webb. Barbara Stein was taking her two kids and buggering off, leaving the clip in the web there. Anyway, he finds out. He boards the ship. Yeah. And that's the story how the you know, how they you know, how their story goes along to keep the story together of the Titanic. And uh, Clip in the Web and Barbara Stemrick have two kids. A girl that's about eighteen and a young boy about twelve. Young boy loves his father. Anyway, it's uh, it's not it's not too sad. You know, it, uh, but it's a well, well, well done story, so it's all right. I, I give that another seven. You can watch it. You can watch it again and again. I've watched it a few times over the years since I have it, right? And every once in a while I dig it out and watch it. Anyway, the other one was uh, on um, the movie channel and Rogers. <coughs> Will Smith and Edward Norton, Kate Winslet, a few other actors. Collateral Beauty. Um... Will Smith is a, a man that loses his six-year-old daughter, and he's not doing well. Um, you know, he's not eating, he's not drinking, he's staying in his apartment, he's not working, he's not doing anything. So his three partners, I guess, get together and they hire, they hire three act, actors, you know, to play the part of uh, death, time, and love. And they all pay Will Smith a visit. So that's a very good movie. I liked it. I thought it was good. I think it's from the year 
last year or in 2017? I didn't write it down, so I forgot to write it down. But anyway, that's a very good movie too also. I, I give that a seven too. It's worth, it's a good watch. Uh, what else did I watch? I watched, uh, this one's on TC, TCM also. That's called Flight Commander, made in 1930. Yeah, that's 1930. And it's directed by Howard Hawks. Stars Richard Bartholomus, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Neil Hamilton, and Frank McHugh. And one of his early, really early movies. Not in it very long, but he's in it. Uh, it's about 1915, uh, First World War, where um, all these young guys are flying airplanes across, you know, bombing things and places and different things. And, you know, five of them go out or eight of them go out and only eight or, you know, if eight go out, you know, five come back. You know, them, that, that kind of thing. So the one guy that uh, is sending everybody out kind of gets put up higher in command. And the one guy that's always saying yes to that first guy, he gets placed in command to send all the flyers out. So that's a very good, uh, very good story. Uh, just about the First World War and the Flyers and all the young people that they send up in there to drop bombs on people and machine gun each other and the other airplanes from Germany and stuff like that. So that, that gets a seven too. These movies are super just worthwhile watching. So that one's TCM 1930 Flight Commander. And the other one, Patient Zero. It's like, it's kind of like a zombie type movie. What is it? Rabies? It's something about getting bit and stuff like that, right? It's like, and these people are all inside this military place, and they're trying to. There's this one guy who got bit, but nothing happened to him, right? He nothing. He didn't turn. But now he's able to communicate with these rabbit rabbit people, so he talks to them, kind of thing. And one thing leads to another. Anyway, they're inside this this place, inside bottom bottom of this place take elevators down and stuff and they they have zombies there and they're trying to talk to them and figure out who was the first where was the first place that anybody got bit and who were the first people that got bit so they might be able to find a cure right so that didn't work out too well so they're in this place and there's Stanley Tucci Tucci he's in it too but he's smarter than the other zombies so one thing leads to another, yeah. So it's not bad. It's not that great. It's not bad, but it's not great. So uh, it doesn't even come close to a seven, but it gets a six. It fell short a little bit, in my opinion. So how's that? All right. I think that's it for the ones written down and the ones that I watched on TV. So, oh, okay. So let's watch next. Um... Uh, I watched uh, Alien, Alien versus uh, Predator, right? So yeah, so they're on a. I guess they go to a planet, and they go down into this place, and there's about fifteen of them, and they investigate this. I don't know what it's called. They investigate this thing. It's a, it's a, these movies are all the same in a roundabout way. So, I mean, this one's okay. It's like you know, the predator aliens are there, and they're, 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 they're predators and aliens are killing each other. Plus, they're killing all the people that went down to investigate, right? So they're they're you know they're on a, a planet, and this girl's trying to. Uh, into this cave and they have to go down inside this place and she's trying to keep everybody alive and they all have to do what she tells them to do and all that and you know <clears throat> I don't know how to explain this movie but that's how I see it so she tries to keep everybody alive and that stuff but uh, anyway there's 15 people going down or at least that mound say for instance of course they get bumped off one by one and it all depends who's left at the end of the movie so this is a not a bad story. It's pretty. It's worthwhile. It gets a seven. Another seven movie. It's okay to watch it. And then there's this one. Three years later, right? Uh, Alien versus uh, Predator. Requiem. Requiem. Did I say that right? R e q u i e m. 
Anyway, um, yeah, this one's this one's a funny one. Uh, funny in a uh, not in a yeah funny one. Anyway, this one to tell you the truth, it kind of reminded me of Gremlins for some reason. You know, Gremlins in the, in the, in a bar at Christmas time. Uh, anybody remember Gremlins? Well, the, why I thought of that when I watched this, I have no idea. It just popped into my head. So yeah, so one thing leads to another, and this um, um, aliens they end up on Earth, and there's predator on Earth, and he's trying to, you know, he's hunting for the aliens. Of course, there's cops there with guns and everything, and they come across the predator, and what happens, right? And start shooting at the predator. Of course, he shoots back, and. Yeah, then, then, you know, the whole town gets involved, right? The whole town starts, um, you know, the aliens start munching on the people and killing them, and the predators killing people, and uh, the next thing you know, everybody's freaking dying in town, and there, there's people trying to get out of town and go someplace, and it's, ugh, it's, it's total chaos. It's not a bad movie, so if you like, you know, if you like Alien vs. Predator, the first one, then you'll like this one, too. The only thing it reminded me of Gremlins. That's about it. But another seven, another seven movie, and what else did we watch? Okay, we watched this one. 1939. Good year for movies. I keep telling everybody. 1939. The Roaring Twenties. James Cagney and Priscilla Lane. Humphrey Bogart. Right. So there we go. So what happens? This all takes place in 19. Uh, 1918 on the war, the First World War, right, 1918. And then Cagney gets to go home, and of course there's no jobs, right, everybody, you know. Back then when you got to go home from the First World War, there was hardly anything for the guys that got home to do, I mean, as far as I know, but this movie, right? I wasn't around in 1918, I never came home from a war, so I have no idea. But anyway, then the years, a couple of years later, you know, the, the, the booze, everybody stopped drinking booze. It was against the law to have a drink, right? So then the speakeasies open and the submachine guns and people selling liquor and shooting each other and all that stuff. So James Cagney was one of the top of the, you know, at the top, you know, the money and, and guns and, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? Of course, he meets a young girl. Uh, she sent him a... Uh, what is it, a letter, you know, it's a pen pals. So he goes to her house to see her, thinking that he's going to see a nice young lady. Anyway, she is nice and she is young, but she's very young. She's still going to school. Anyway, one thing leads to another, and, uh, you know, they're selling booze, and then he gets her to, uh, you know, hook her, he hooks her up a few late years later and sings in a club, right? So he falls in love with her, of course, so, but she doesn't love him. So this is a very good movie. What's one of those Jimmy Cagney movies? This is a good one for, the, for 1938. This is a very good story, well thought of, well acted, and I liked it. So this one gets an eight. Yeah, this one gets an eight. This is an eight. The other one, Somewhere in Time. What is this, 1983? What year is this? Oh, I don't know. What is it? Anyway, it doesn't matter the year. You know what year it is. Look it up. I can't see the back of it. I don't have my glasses on. Hmm. Oh, 1980. Oh, frick, 1980. Yeah, 1980. Would you go back in time? If you could, would you go back in time? Anyway. Christopher Reeve and Jane Seymour come back to me somewhere in time. It's a story about time travel. Goes to this hotel, falls asleep, and he wakes up, and he's back in 19, what was it, 19, 1910, something like that? Oh, 1912, pardon me, I'm up by a couple of years. But anyway, love. It, it all has to do with love. He goes back in time to be in love with Jane Seymour. This is a great movie. A good little movie. Very good movie. This is another eight. So if you haven't seen 
Somewhere in Time with Christopher Reeve and Jane Seymour. It's a good love story. Watch it. I recommend it. An eight. I get it an eight. And here's one here too. The Secret of Road Irish. The Irish. Yes. 1993. This movie is made in 1993. It has to do with um, an island. And they go back to this island. They get kicked off. At, in the beginning, they got kicked off. They had to move. Anyway, so they're moving all their stuff on the boats and their little Jimmy's uh, about, uh, I don't know, three, four months old, whatever. And he's in his cradle or his basket. The basket gets picked up by the water of the ocean and starts getting carried away and they run for him and get in boats and chase them, but they, they never got him. So some of them think he's dead and some of them think he's still alive and he's being looked after by the seals. And some people believe that seals are looking after him and they talk, talk to this little guy and he's, they're looking after him. Some people say, man, and he's dead. But anyway, the, great, the little girl gets to go live because the little girl's with her father, and you know, the, you're not doing a good job looking after the little girl. He's always working on the boats and selling sh fish and stuff. So we, she gets sent to live with her grandma and grandpa. And then she goes to the other island, which is across from where they live at, and her and her cousin fix up the houses. And then she sees Jimmy, the little guy, and she tells him, and they don't believe her. So. In the summertime, they're getting kicked out, out of their house because the tourists are coming by and they pay more money. So they're told to leave, so they have to leave. So now they're thinking about going across the way to the other island, so where Jimmy was taken away. But anyway, is it Jimmy? Did they find Jimmy? Do they, you know, does Jimmy come around again? You'll have to watch it to see. Secret of Rowan Irish, another seven. A seventh, good story. If you haven't seen Secret of Rowan Irish, watch it. Mick Eiley and A.I. and Colby. Watch it. And this one. Sabrina. Humphrey Bogart. Audrey Hepburn. William Holden. She lives over top of the garage. Her father drives the car. He's a chauffeur. You know, and these people are rich. These people are millionaires. She gets go to France. Her father sends her to France to learn how to cook, to be a chef. You know, so she comes back home. She looks a little different. All snazzed up, you know, make up the whole nine yards. And this clown, you know, wants to pick her up. And he doesn't remember who she is. Anything, the story is... She gets close back to home right now with her dad and stuff. And then these two, this guy, Humphrey Bogart's character, takes her out because he messed up his brother. He put glass, or when his brother had glasses in his pocket, his brother sat down, this guy sat down and broke glasses in his pocket so he had, he had glass all in his ass so he couldn't make the date, which he planned to do. So anyway, you get Humphrey Bogart going out with uh, Catherine Hepburn. It's a good movie, but I don't know how many times I watched this movie over the years. And for me, I found it a little hard to believe. I just, you know, I just it's a good story and all that kind of stuff. But it's not, I don't know why, I, I just can't believe it. It's one of those, I, mean, I have mixed emotions about this movie. I like the movie, but it's kind of like hard to believe. So that's the movies I watched this week. And this one gets a 7 out of a 10. So there you go. So I'll be back next week, next Friday, to tell you all about the movies I've watched the coming week. So there you go, people. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll talk to you next week. Keep watching those movies.